So, um, so what we're doing is um, we're planning to do the uh, Loon demo and then the M uh, release planning today. So uh, the Loon, um, what we want to do is go to the account for the Loon release, uh, which should be coming out shortly. And then uh, the M release will be coming out at the end of November. Uh, from a logistics standpoint, uh, please make your line calls being recorded. Uh, from an agenda standpoint, our, uh, what we want to do is um, go over the goals of the planning session, roadmap, uh, the uh, sorry, magpie schedule, and contributor site. So goals of the release, uh, we want to review the Zoom deliverables and community plans for the M and N releases. Uh, the M releases uh, is scheduled for November of 2017, and the N release is for uh, February of 2018. This is a lovely slide. Um, and then what we want to do with this meeting is to uh, make sure that uh, people with shared interests and, of course, dependencies um, see what they need from each other, um, understand what is needed in terms of the integration load, so how much work we've got, and then uh, make sure everyone's on the same page, uh, and then provide uh, the context for the upcoming sprint planning session. Uh, roadmap. Let's have Thomas go over the roadmap. All right. Um, I guess I'm seeing right? So um, for the dynamic configuration, um, so first of all, let's just take a look at the overall list of priorities. So um, in roughly in the list of order of priority, the dynamic configuration remaining on top to be able to button up the, uh, the uh, dynamic store subsystem, ability to synchronize the configurations with uh, devices to the southbound, and, um, and also to be able to start introducing support for Yang 1.1. Um, uh, the next uh, um, sort of high-level priority is the in service software upgrade. I'll let uh, Jordan talk more about that. Um, along with some uh, work on uh, additional work, maintenance work on a core. And again, I'll let Jordan talk about the details of this. B4 is next on the list. It's kind of rising up in the list of priorities in some corporations with, uh, with other companies. Um, GRPC is something that we would like to push forward as well, and specifically to be able to demonstrate uh, ability to be able to develop applications that reside off-platform but which interact using fine-grained APIs with uh, ONOS. Um, so we'd like to just demonstrate at least one off-platform application that showcases how this can be done. Uh, the UI will continue. Um, Simon and Stephen can provide more details on those. Um, the areas of incubation, uh, the, the virtualization effort will continue to be incubated. Um, there are also no flow agents and uh, ability to connect to external internet. And, uh, I don't want to exhaust the full level of detail here, so I'm just flying over it in high level detail. But this is roughly in the order of uh, priorities for those initiatives. This is no means, the by no means, the next exhaustive list, but at least from within the ONF organization, this is kind of what we're trying to promote as our top level priorities for the project. Okay. Thanks, Thomas. So we'll go over the um, schedule. So in terms of the schedule, we're looking at uh, another set of four sprints. We'll start it on uh, 9-5 and targeting to end at the end of November. So we'll go ahead and get started with the uh, plans um, for the park. All right, so uh, for, for the core, uh, in the Loon release, we've actually done some major refactoring of the, the RAP implementation underlying ONOS consistent primitives. And there's two rationales for this. One was for to support ISSU, which I'll talk about in a second. And the other was just to address uh, Lots of lots of uh, just bugs resulting just from 
uh, architectural deficiencies that we've seen, like cascading uh, timeouts and things. So uh, we basically significantly refactored the raft implementation uh, related to that, uh, added some new primitive performance tests, which are doing really well, way, be way better than before. Uh, added also uh, primitive fault injection linearizability verification tests, which verify uh, uh, that consistency models are not broken in primitives. And then uh, recently we added a new flow rule store. So the flow rule store uh, previously was uh, had some bugs in it, and we uh, replaced it with uh, consistent primitives. And so upcoming for uh, the next release is, I mean, part of the, part of the refactoring of uh, the RAPT implementation was also for future uh, code disaggregation. So one of the things we're trying to do is move more of the primitive code out of Bonus, which, I mean, in, just into another project where uh, it can be more useful generally to people outside of Bonus and where we can maintain it separately uh, from all the networks. So, uh, we're going to continue work on that, continue moving primitives out into atomics. Uh, and then the big initiatives uh, for the next release are improving uh, dynamic scaling uh, and repartitioning. So, uh, which we it, we have limited support for this, but there's still significant limitations to how Onos clusters can scale. So we're going to continue work on that. And then we've had requests about uh, updated documentation around around the core. Uh, primitives, so we'll be working on that. And then ISSU, uh, related to the core, as I said, we, we refactored the uh, raft implementation. What this gave us was uh, the, the other big rationale for the refactoring was so that we could store uh, objects that are stored inside of Onos in a version format so they can be read across multiple Onos versions, and this is the basis for ISSU where we can uh, store state in one version, uh, upgrade, a, upgrade a node, and read it in another version. And so this is a huge, uh, huge improvement and a huge step towards uh, ISSU. And the same goes for messaging. Uh, all communication nodes can now communicate uh, across uh, running different versions of the Onos software. And then uh, upcoming releases we're just going to be building on that uh, so pretty much moving up the stack so uh, in the M release uh, moving up to stores and working on upgrade processes for stores uh, and then finally uh, in N application level upgrades and so uh, we're going to be ramping up the ISSU brigade uh, pretty shortly in the beginning of this release cycle uh, and I invite people to come join the, the Slack channel, which we do have right now, and the Google group, which all has to be created this week. Okay. Thanks, Jordan. Dynamic configuration. Oh. Do you want to take this? Oh, sure, sure. So, what we've been doing so far, uh, where? My face should be. I haven't seen any. Yeah, obviously you can hear us. So what we've been doing is trying to come up with a support for open config syntaxes. And now I think the open config order model is in now Yang, so at least it can parse and vi visualize the Yang model that open config defines. Other supports are like the supporting extending the support of more and more of Yang syntaxes. One of them was the Yang RPC support, which is also supported by REST via RESTConf right now. now. And other is the user's augmentation syntax that Yang supports. Another Yang related support we introduced was that Yang Live compiler. Previously, we had to pre compile Yang and feed it into Onos in order to handle that Yang model, but we can on the fly give the Yang model itself and under the full compile the Yang model for you. So eventually, we can learn device Yang from them and so on, but that kind of underlying mechanic is now coming in place. So we so now we we was seeing some performance issue due to the fragmented event that comes for every change event. We now have the underlying mechanic to consolidate that piece into one piece. So we have those in places. And at rest component I already 
talked about the, the next item is the device synchronizer that the mechanics to talk to the device we introduced the protocol abstraction layer and that will eventually support nesconf and other device configuration protocol under the hood and along the way we found various bugs and we fixed them along the way that's what we accomplished for the loom yes. and for the M MVs and beyond we in and to support restconf access directly into the device tree. So this is in a sense similar to reverse proxy in front of the device so that from single vantage point we can access whatever restconf rest or nestconf device in the network through on us. That's the intention of that. The first item. Second one is that further improve the coverage of the Yang syntax defined in Yang 1.1. We will need to figure out which one we will prioritize and so on, but that is the direction. The next item is that so yeah we have been heavily on the device the development side of things we will need to improve the documentation so that it will be easy for either device vendor or the people who want to consume that config substance so that they can start playing with this subsystem. And the next one is the device synchronizer. We have the initial sketch in place. We need to finalize on the netconf support so that we can actually start talking to the netconf devices. And we need to start, the last item is we need to start discussing about network-wide transaction kind of thing. And for, and then further, uh, that's not, that's up to date, but we will probably need to start thinking into the performance improvement by sharding the stores and so on. That's something we need to discuss in the background. That's about it. If I can add a point of clarification, just thank you. thanks, Lisa. But with respect to NetConf, uh, so just to be clear, we. Applications today can already use NetConf to talk to devices, but this is specifically to provide an adapter through which the device synchronizer can apply and consolidate the configuration uh, the, between the device and and the bootstrap for the device. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thomas. T4, Carmela. Yes, I'm here. Okay, so for the new release, we accomplished a few things. Uh, first of all, we, uh, uh, we provide a new PI framework, where PI stands for a, a protocol pipeline uh, independence. So Onos now has classes to describe uh, PI entities, such as tables, match fields, actions, etc. cetera. Um, we provide a few services, basic services, to either the management and control of this PI-enabled devices. And also, we extended uh, existing abstractions like Fluorule to support PI match and actions. And I'll provide more details about this uh, during the demo. We also provide uh, P4 and time support in the form of a driver. Um, we uh, implemented a generic gRPC controller that it's used by P4 and time, but that can be also used in the future for uh, GNMI. Um, so other, other um, yeah, protocols can use that. Uh, we implement a general device provider that is used to discover uh, uh, P4 enabled devices and other kind of devices uh, using uh, NetCFG. And finally, we uh, also provide a BMV2 driver where BMV2 is the P4 reference software switch and it uh, uses uh, P4 on time. Yeah, so uh, for the M release, uh, we plan on uh, keep working on P4 on time and the PI framework. Uh, so we would like to add support for uh, things like groups and device mastership. Uh, we plan on adding support for GNMI uh, with support for open config models for port configuration uh, and uh, port status. And also we would like to do some uh, exploratory work on uh, virtual network function of floating to hardware. Um, in general, we would like to see what we can do with um, P4 enabled devices uh, beyond uh, things like for wording. Uh, so we'll do this for the, for the M release. For the N release, um, we plan on keep working on GNMI and maybe support more uh, other models, other open config models. Uh, we would like to have support for uh, in-band network telemetry. We plan on working on a, a fabric for a core trellis that is based on P4. And we also plan on working on features for uh, uh, dyna dynamic program loading, meaning that uh, 
we would like to see um, we would like to be able to uh, uh, swap from one P4 program to another uh, once the device has been connected to Onos. And if you would like to help uh, with this, I put here the link to the actual um, Jira Epic with all the stories that we're working on right now and we work in the future. Thank and that's you. all. Thanks, Mello. Thank you. Aaron, the CRPC. So what we managed to do in the last for Loon release, so we got our first services merged at the sort of the very end of the release actually. We we had a lot of pending and a lot that didn't make it in, unfortunately. Um, we got but we did get the majority of the models of sort of so our models are internal data structures, which is very helpful. It should speed up development in the subsequent releases. Um, we've got our build problems resolved to the point where they work correctly, but it's not the optimal solution to it. So that's sort of still in play. Uh, we've got our packaging problems. That's the, the package issue. That's really Carmel is doing, but it's very helpful for us because we couldn't run our servers before that. Um, we sort of set out a set of conventions, both for the GRPC structure in terms of file structure, naming conventions, um, how to basically how the implementation should be done, how the testing should be done. So we set out sort of conventions to streamline future developments. And we um, factored to some degree the translation system, translation between sort of uh, messages and the internal models to handle certain cases that weren't previously being considered. Um, and then so for our M release, the proposed, uh, so we have seven services that are in a pending state, sort of going back and forth in Garrett, and those are will hopefully be merged. We have two additional services we'd like to build in order to support the one thing application, which we'd like to write in off in an alternate language. And we wanted to merge our registry service, but that's actually already been done. It just didn't make it into L. Um, so, and for N, we're looking to add a few additional services. Uh, so currently the way the registry works is it does static binding, which means basically whatever services are bound at startup time are the only services you get. We'd like to see that switch to dynamics, so that if we, if we allow additional registration while the system's running, we don't have to break all the existing GRC connections, because that's how it looks right now. It basically restarts the server every time. Um, we want to integrate some form of AAA uh, to allow us to add admin services. So far, we've only included the, the versions of services that allow us to do state, not the versions of services that allow us to modify state. Once we have authentication, it's reasonable to allow admin services. And we want to do some stress testing, basically provide numbers on how this performs as compared to REST and as compared to other communication systems. And uh, yeah, the only support we really need from the community is if we can get other people to help push the reviews through. That, that okay. Um, yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Hello? Hello. Um, so yeah, we added a few more tools for the GUI development uh, lifecycle. So we've added linting, um, which revealed 3,000 code inconsistencies, which is now reduced to zero. Um, we added code coverage tool, which gives you the same output as what we have for the Java code, which is a uh, Sonar. Um, so we now get a table view of uh, each class and its coverage. We added a new step to the build process to bundle the JavaScript and CSS files. And as a result of that, we ended up improving the initial page load performance by about a second. Um, we worked on some more diagnostics tools um, from the GUI. So port filtering and stuff on the port view, we can now diagnose issues within ports or see the load of ports um, straight from the GUI rather than CLI. Um, we improved our code coverage from the tests by 19%. Um, and then there was a few more features added to topology, uh, the classic topology, which we ported over to topology 2 to try and keep, or the regional web topology, to try and keep that as consistent as possible. Um, overall, in this release, we fixed 11 bugs and completed 22 stories. Uh, for the M release, on the next slide. Um, so we're planning on reviewing the classic topology and seeing what is misaligned within the regional wire topology and we'll begin porting over those features as well in during M release. Um, 
as a result of that, that will enable us to um, port over the classic topology overlays into the regional aware um, topology. So we'll be working on those sort of side by side. Um, and then across all the views within the GUI, there's a lot of duplicated codes to do with table views and deep details panel that gets revealed when you click on an item. So we're going to refactor that so there's a lot less repeated code and we'll have an API to handle that. Once we have that API in place, we'll um, make each view consistent. So every time you click on a table view, you'll get a more detailed view in your details panel. At the moment, that's a bit hit and miss. Um, proposed for N is server-side server filtering for the intents. Um, improving diagnostic stores, which is a discussion we had a while back about diagnosing issues within cord. So it'll be mostly aimed at diagnosing cord rather than just on us on its own. Um, and hopefully we'll be at the point where we can remove the old topology view and be in a place where region aware topology view will be on par with it. Um, where the community could help, um, a few additional developers would be very useful right now. Um, but we've added two more, one for sure, another one, and maybe. Um, and yeah, that's it from me. Thanks, you. Lion Brigade? Yeah, I don't think Alpha's on, online. I threw a couple of notes up here. Um, we have uh, in the, in the uh, Lion, not Lion, sorry, Loon release, um, <laughs> uh, we, um, we did uh, add localization into both traditional and simplified Chinese for the topology view. We're still uh, hoping to get, uh, well, not for Loon, but um, so. Yeah, so uh, work is progressing. It's a little slower. I think uh, Elias is only able to spend a certain amount of time working on this. Um, but I can speak to that on, on the next slide for the M releases. We need to catch up with the Italian, Spanish, and Korean localization of topology view. Um, and we need uh, to work on internationalizing the, uh, the remaining views. So just as a quick reminder, internationalization is making your software able to show in other languages, localization is adding the language bundle. Um, so for for M, that's what we plan to do. Um, M, just a shot in the dark here, maybe we can pick up some new languages that we can add. Um, the areas that we'd really like the community to help is, well, if you have a language that you'd like to internationalize into, please get in touch with Elisa to kind of come on board and uh, help with us there. But we are looking for uh, more engineering help to do the internationalization of the other views. And this is where uh, Java and JavaScript knowledge would be very useful. Um, but we, we have now established enough uh, examples of how to do this that it should really just be, you know, kind of seeing what's been done before and applying those patterns. So, so progress is being made. Yeah. So if I can add, uh, I think the table that you set up, the spreadsheet, that shows now the, the views which are uh, uh, localized and which are remain to be localized versus languages. I think we're like 60 percent. Right. We have uh, yeah, we have a tracking spreadsheet which is basically showing what the localization models are and what the views are and the languages that they're in. And we're using that basically to kind of uh, track how how progress is going. Um, I don't have a screenshot of that. Yeah, but I think significant progress and I think uh, that that upper part of the spreadsheet contains so some of the initial costs I think as you said those will be right uh, yeah amortized amortized and much yeah. cheaper to do that in time can you update this the slide with the accomplishments for this release before the meeting this afternoon sure that I could yeah absolutely I, yeah. I could do it two minutes I just didn't want to delay yeah anything. I just wanted to show it because I think it's fairly significant accomplishment Hey Simon. Yeah, who's this? This is Brian. Okay. Uh, would it be possible to uh, use an automated translation service to seed some of this, or do you think that the the translation would be too difficult for an automated service? 
uh, we could experiment, but I wouldn't uh, mm -hmm. hold my breath about it. I think uh, there's a lot of specific, specific, I can't even say it. It's very specific in places. I see. Well, I mean, I guess the, the point, right, is I don't know exactly how much work it is to produce a, 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 a local, uh, localized bundle, but it's possible if like, you know, 80 or 90% of the work could be done in an automated way that it, it would be a lower barrier for entry to adding new languages. Possibly so, but I think at this point in time, it's been made so simple that we'll probably burn more, more energy on, on automatically translating it uh, than, than on just manually. I mean, that effort would probably, the effort to automatically translate it or seed it would probably come in handy if you wanted to explore the number of languages. Uh, Brian, there's also a component uh, that I encountered, for example, when translating to Italian, is that sometimes you actually need to choose the better rewording, rephrasing, because the direct translation doesn't work. Exactly. And sometimes also the languages, uh, especially like Italian, Spanish, French, sometimes, or even German, don't translate some of the terms. So it's up to a native speaker to pick exactly what needs to be translated and how, in my opinion. So that's why automatic translation doesn't work that much, in my opinion. Yeah, oh, that, that's totally fair. I don't, I don't doubt that at all, that a, a native speaker is going to do better than an automated service. I was just, I didn't, under, I didn't really understand the scope of, of the commitment we're asking to do a, a language pack. It's, it's not that hard, Brian. If you were to look at the amount of work, the amount of words to be translated, it's not that difficult. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, actually, I just added a quick screenshot on the next slide, I think. Um, so you probably can't really... <laughs> that's that. what I was trying to <laughs> describe. Scale, but, words. but... But, yeah, there's, there's good coverage. The, um, uh, the yellow uh, with X's in are still to be um, internationalized. internationalized. The, uh, the green is internationalized and localized. Um, the, uh, the the red is um, missing translations, um, but but yeah. So so we, we're definitely um, making good progress here. What we what we need to do is add new languages and push the co add new columns out to the right. To answer your question, though, he could probably or the Dutch typical Dutch could probably translate it into quite all those languages. <laughs> 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 Virtualization, it looks like uh, we've added meter service, revised intent service, um, added distributed stores, and added CLI uh, to balance mastership roles. Uh, OF agent now handles LODP and a variety of OF staff. I think there was some work on uh, the gateway, um, but I assume those uh, fall into the next release. Okay, so in M, uh, there's uh, some work on OF agent. Um, as well as uh, some of the external connectivity through the gateway uh, and OpenStack integration. In the end release, uh, there would be support for uh, network snapshotting um, and additional southbound implementation. Let's move on to the build and package infrastructure brigade. Uh, is visual on? Brian, do you want to take this one? Um, sure. So uh, for this for this uh, release, um, there is a uh, an Eclipse 
uh, tool underway that would enable you to migrate the uh, IntelliJ uh, based buck project files to uh, Eclipse. Um, that's currently uh, undergoing review and, and is getting some feedback for, from some Eclipse developers like Utah. Um, there is also um, a new secondary Jenkins service that has been brought up, uh, which is still exploring the use of pipelines for Ono's uh, build validations, um, as well as exploring the use of STC for uh, doing the automated test suite that we have uh, as part of either master runs or eventually check-ins. Um, and then finally, there was a survey that was done um, that was trying to help um, broadly cat uh, categorize and characterize the, the users that we have uh, from a software perspective of Onos, uh, trying to figure out uh, where, where and if there are still deficiencies for Buck as part of the, the Palm obsolescence activity, um, as well as uh, attempting to understand the capabilities of developers that would need to read and contribute to documentation. Uh, because the, this brigade is also uh, tasked with um, producing some documentation for um, like the system user level, et cetera, et cetera. Um, some of that stuff's in the wiki, but there, there may be more uh, that will, will need to be produced. So uh, that's more or less the accomplishments for this, this uh, release. What, what was the question though? I think Brian. Brian, are you seeing the slide? Yeah. I think there was one other one, one, one other uh, item that you mentioned that isn't on the slide. Is that true or not? Um, so Eclipse support for Buck, yeah, that's underway. Uh, the survey, yes. Uh, and the Jenkins-based STC execution. Um, and pipeline exploration. Uh, Brian, one quick question. Uh, will the results of the survey be shared? Um, I don't see well, any reason w like why they would be private at all. So uh, maybe Vishwa could, well, maybe we want to hide people's identities, but the, the aggregation uh, results of the survey might, should be, should be shareable. Um, maybe Vishwa can do that. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the, the proposal for this next uh, release is, um, as you may or may not know, our infrastructure is in the process of being migrated to Linux Foundation. Uh, this includes Garrett, Jenkins, Jira, Wiki, et cetera. Um, so a, a big chunk of the early part of this release is going to be supporting um, the, the migration of Jenkins over to Linux Foundation. Uh, there are a number of Maybe you'd call them legacy jobs in Jenkins that, that should be removed. And then there's a bunch of uh, validation jobs and some new pipeline style jobs that uh, we'll, we'll need to bring over um, and get set up and make sure they're talking to the new services and have the appropriate uh, permissions, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that'll be a big chunk of work uh, in the, the early part. Um, given the results of the survey and closure on the last remaining um, blockers for Buck. Um, there'll, there'll be uh, the finalization of the Palm Ops lessons activity. Um, there's uh, a, a brother or sister, so to speak, of Buck called Basil, um, which may provide uh, some, some benefits. Um, so from a build file perspective and user perspective, it's going to feel almost almost the same if we can provide the same the same rules uh, in in Basil. It'll just be a matter of changing the the file names from Buck to Basil. And from a build perspective, the targets the way you invoke targets will be almost identical. Um, the the reasons the primary reasons here is uh, for code disaggregation and sharing of custom rules. Buck is is not well suited, uh, whereas Basil allows you to define a repo like workspace. Uh, that can that enables you to pull pull various projects in. Uh, rules can also be imported and versioned more easily. Um, so there there may be some advantages there. Uh, so there's an investigation underway, 
as to what the, the cost at least would be for the transition and from a support and maintenance of the build tool perspective, uh, what that would look like going forward. Um, and then there's also um, maybe some initial uh, investigation on what the uh, what the tools that we'd have around and policies we could build around semantic versioning are. Um, and my guess is that uh, some of these investigations are going to lead to uh, some action items, and we don't know what those are yet, so we haven't really been able to uh, to scope out much beyond N or M, sorry, into N. Um, as far as community work, uh, a lot of these things are going to touch uh, a wide part of the community, specifically the Jenkins stuff initially. Um, so for, for that, uh, it, when you notice problems or issues, uh, the Brigade Infra Slack group and mailing lists are, are good places to start. Um, for code base disaggregation, that's going to be touching large swaths of code uh, if and when that happens. Uh, that likely isn't going to happen until uh, work on uh, Bazel and Buck uh, comparisons is complete. So that they may not happen until the end of M or maybe N. Um, but identifying areas, uh, shoring up APIs, et cetera, will be helpful. Um, and if you've got uh, interest in uh, or experience with build systems, um, your participation in that investigation uh, is more than welcome. Okay, thanks, Brian. Yep. Move on to the teaching brigade. Uh, we don't have an update on this, but they are contributing uh, tutorials to the upcoming Onos build. So we'll see uh, the results of some of the work that the teaching brigade has been working on. Security and performance analysis is uh, Stefano on. Okay. Um, so, from a learning accomplishment standpoint, it looks like there was a hackathon run at RESCOM 2017. Um, there is already a, a report from the Security and Performance Brigade with an analysis. Uh, the plan is to publish it before Ono is built. Um, I think the ask to the team is uh, please review the report. And then uh, for M deliverable, the first brigade report, and then N deliverable, a second report. So the first report targeted for uh, September, and then the second report targeted for Q1 2018. Um, looks like what they're needing help with is uh, need more people to help with the security issues documented in the first report, and then someone to develop a bundle state monitoring system in support of clustering migration. Um, so just a, a quick note in terms of security, we actually did receive a few um, security issues from the brigade and have worked to address those. Um, so you'll see those as part of uh, um, the security advisories that we'll be updating. Um, and then I guess as a note to the team, please review the report. And then we'll go to QA, to Jitra. Yeah. So for QA, in terms of uh, loan accomplishments, we refactored several tests. Um, some of them were like functional optical and some startup procedures in various tests and some VPLS based tests and even some scale performance intent flow based uh, throughput tests as well. And there were also some framework upgrades in test on and we refactored some of the test on uh, framework and then we added some Python debugger tools and uh, also added some new startup procedures. So we implemented those startup procedures in, in the test cases. So we have like a uniform startup procedures for uh, some of the test cases accordingly and also we implemented a new cluster class in the test and then we uh, implemented this new cluster class um, as part of several test cases and much of the work um, in in uh, loon went into like creating the cluster class and implementing them uh, in several uh, functional test cases a cluster based and performance scale intent flow and uh, some other test cases uh, as well. And also we did some of the updated, some of the remaining Jenkins job to use the pipeline. 
And there were some uh, uh, issues with the test on framework, which were pending since many releases, and we were able to fix uh, several issues on the test on framework also. And uh, we also had uh, uh, written a new performance white paper, some one of the business version, um, and it will be released soon. Uh, probably it will be published in the next month. Uh, but uh, as part of Loon accomplishment, we had uh, QA delivered that paper. And we also have um, created some new test cases uh, in cluster base for continuous restarts of Onos nodes. And we also created a test for the failover latency uh, for the master play failover scenario. Uh, we created some VPL VPLS failover test scenarios and also some throughput test cases using the flow objective rules. And other Im important task that we did for Loon was updating the system test wiki pages and much of the work also went into updating several wiki pages, uh, it, like in the test plan areas, uh, results and also test guide. Uh, most of the updates were um, either updating to the latest information and uh, adding some of the missing information and uh, for the test guide we added more clear and detailed information so it is easier for anyone from the community to also uh, look at the test guide and then start start um, applying those principles of system tests. And we also investigated some failed results. Uh, there had been several failures in functional intent test cases and BGPLS. Uh, this has been a while and uh, we were able to accomplish them. And then, um, um, and then these uh, test cases are running fine now. So these are the accomplishments for Loon. So going to the next um, M release, please. So for M release, uh, we plan to create a test framework for the ISSU feature, and we plan to write some new test cases for documentary primitive tests. Uh, and uh, there are several uh, failures from Delta security, and we had been investigating with uh, uh, Dylan from on the security brigade, and we plan to investigate them and then make them uh, run properly in the M release. And we also plan to write a new technical white paper which has been already discussed about the plan and the content of the technical paper so we plan to accomplish that as part of m release and uh, there is a, a big refactor work uh, in in terms of displaying the results of graphs for all the tests um, we would plan to accomplish that as part of m and there are also a few test on framework upgrades that we want to make um, and then probably we would pick and choose the important ones and then change some of the test on framework uh, for some issues and changes and for the proposed end deliverables um, we plan to uh, use the framework which we wrote in uh, the m release and then write new test cases for issu and uh, there are some read out intent tests that we plan to write so if uh, that we plan to do it in the end and also some topology change throughput measurements from for the southbound changes so in terms of areas uh, we would request the uh, community to help us creating some tests in the that for the work which happens in the brigades so that's all from qa thanks Akitra. I have an obstacle. Hello. Um, so, uh, in terms of accomplishments, we had a fairly light schedule, and I think um, you'll see it kind of continues in the next <laughs> release. Uh, we kind of went under the hood and, and um, uh, renewed and, and, and rewrote a couple of the intent compilers. Uh, there were a bunch of new device drivers that we wrote or were contributed from various vendors. I think those are always welcome. Um, and then the third part is really, uh, you know, trying to get some of the the asks because, uh, you know, I didn't mention that the main priority for Packet Optical is to get a deployment going with NCT, uh, but uh, we help drive um, the asks for, or the priority list for, for the config and Yang tools flip to the next one you'll see you know in terms of the highest priority work is really is, is there uh, so I think Utah is already contributing there uh, if I can be useful I can probably help out there as well the other thing we're, we're focusing on and in that sense I guess that the planning is, is or the release planning is not well timed we are um, 
in the process of creating kind of a um, new group of service providers that want to drive uh, standardization around Rodem uh, and possibly this aggregation, even though there's less appetite for that, we, we, are, feeling. Uh, we are coming together a pro uh, next month. So at that point, I think I will know more of what the, the agenda for the next couple of releases will be. Um, in terms of uh, community help, we have, as always, a bunch of uh, starter tickets in, the, in JIRA. We keep on adding to those. Um, once in a while, someone picks one up, but uh, we would love to see more people step up and uh, contribute. Uh, the other part is something um, high on the ask agenda for so several service providers, but we need a vendor to step up and help us with uh, streaming telemetry analytics uh, for specifically for uh, optical equipment where there's a bunch of challenges that are very particular to that use case it's something we we have a really hard time driving it ourselves because it, it's very hardware dependent and, um, yeah we'd love to get some help there okay thanks mark um, is on? Okay, uh, I think we have some updates from uh, OpenStack. Um, they added a, a REST interface for OpenStack node operations, added options for Flex and React over staple NAT cloud, removed the use of flow objective from OpenStack networking applications, um, added support uh, for virtual networking for admin state up down, um, added support for OpenStack Helm uh, project, Kubernetes based uh, automated OpenStack deployment by implementing Helm Track. And then uh, in looking at M uh, release, they're looking to add support uh, for UI, um, add support of tracing flows from virtual host to virtual host, gateway and external network, and support of control and data plane monitoring. And then this gen. Okay, um, I will uh, provide a quick update on this. So in this release, we mainly focus on assessing and improving the performance of release of system. And to be more specific, we added several data structure to store mapping information. And, and we also improved the uh, uh, map lookup like uh, performance. And uh, with that further uh, can make a map server and the map reservoir work more efficiently. And the, the detailed performance gain has been written in the first performance uh, white paper uh, with effort by the performance and the secret brigade. So roughly, um, we have uh, like a 600,000 uh, uh, mapping register packet per sec, and uh, only, only, uh, almost only gives less than 5% packet loss, so which is pretty good. Then in M release, we plan to focus on making the communication between router and the controller to be more secure. Uh, so with current implementation, we do not check whether a map register comes from a valid XGR. So with the enhanced security checking feature, we can invalidate the, the mapping register message from those XGR. Um, also, another big piece of work that will be added into the system would be support uh, mapping pro programmability through the RISP driver. Uh, in end release, um, we plan to support mastership for this router, and uh, we also consider to add more use cases. And we hope community can help us to do more performance assessment and to try out the system, uh, subsystem, and the report about. So it's all from the this group. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Dan. Uh, no updates for ACCN. Tony? Okay, hello, I'm here. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, I'm very uh, We didn't make any official contribution for the rule release. We have uh, attempted to improve our system, but there is no update yet. So I'm so sorry about that. And we postponed server tests to the M release. First, we plan to solve an issue between the secret mode owners and uh, build a tool park. It's great. And uh, we are going to resolve this problem very soon, hopefully. And next, uh, we have a task of uh, all my permission grant. For this, uh, we, we plan to develop our system to maintain the application data on a distributed storage. And uh, finally, we are considering to apply Java annotation concept to the system for giving more convenient way to use it. And uh, now for the end release, 
we plan to extend our system to support virtual networks. And this is a, a kind of semantic test, and we discuss how to design our system for this. Also, we plan on reducing runtime overhead. And uh, that's all I have. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Chani. Okay, so uh, I'm Sprint One. Uh, this will start on 9.5. Um, sprint planning at 3 p.m. And then uh, Loom Sprint for Jira Sprints will be closed in a day. 8.31 and new sprints created. And then uh, let's move on to the demos. Um, Carmelo, I will stop sharing and then you can share. Okay. <clears throat> can you see my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so a quick recap of uh, what P4 supporting Loom looks like. So we, we added this um, PI framework, uh, which comprises basically classes to describe PI entities, such as tables, materials, actions, and also services to widen the management and control of PI-enabled devices. We add support for P4 runtime, which is the um, protocol for runtime control of P4-enabled devices that's been uh, developed by the p4.org um, community in collaboration with Google, and it's based on gRPC. So we had support for a gRPC controller and a p4 runtime driver. We also implemented um, a general device provider that is used for the discovery and um, yeah, discovery of also of these uh, p4-enabled devices, and discovery in this case happens uh, via NetCFG. Uh, and we also uh, added a BMV2 driver, where BMV2 is the P4 reference software's reach, and, um, and uh, this is based on P4 and time. <clears throat> so this is what the architecture uh, looks like today. So at the bottom, we have the device. As I said, we have supported the protocol level for a gRPC controller. The driver level, we have support for P4 and time. This is a um, default driver using honest terminology. And then we have uh, we added support for BMV2. Uh, other example of drivers that can be put here are simple drivers for Tofino or other uh, P4 enabled devices. Um, we introduced this concept of pipe confs in Nonos, where pipe confs are basically um, a way to um, a way to uh, collect all the necessary information for honest to program the device with a new, um, with a, a given P4 program and also information to understand that P4 program. So PipeConf can be loaded, uh, for example, as part of, a, of an application. And a PipeConf usually includes uh, a pipeline model, a pipeline interpreter, which is a Java code that is used by honest to understand a given pipeline. It includes uh, pipeline specific behaviors uh, behaviors in the driver sense, honest driver sense. For example, a pipe conf can bring in a specific pipeliner that maps a flow objective for a given uh, pipeline model, uh, or in other words, P4 program, and also brings in a, a target specific configuration. So, in the case of BMV2, to program BMV2 with a new P4 program, we need to push a JSON. In the case of the Fino chip, we might need to push another kind of file. In the case of another device, I don't know. So all, all these different kind of files can be uh, can be put inside this uh, this pipe bomb. At The core layer we have support for um, new services. We have the uh, the SpiteCom service that takes care of uh, managing the association between a pipe conf and a device, and also takes care of deploying a given P4 program to a device. And we also have support. Uh, for a new Flurial translation service that basically translates uh, Flurials from uh, uh, from an honest representation to a representation that it's based on the P4 program running on that device. So the Flurial translation service basically takes as input a Flurial, the pipe conf, and produce 
uh, a table entry that is suitable for the P4 program running on the device. At the application uh, level, we have, as always, this distinction uh, between pipeline agnostic applications, and these are the applications that use uh, abstractions like flow objectives and intents, so they don't care about what the pipeline looks like. On the other side, we have pipeline aware applications, and these are applications that install uh, flow rules. For what you concern flow rules, uh, now in Onos we have two different mode of operation. Uh, we can install flow rules that use the standard existing criteria and instructions, basically the uh, the, the 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 open flow ones. But also now applications can install flow rules that match and perform actions on pipeline uh, specific ones. So the idea is that an application that wants to uh, use a given P4 program can bring in a pipe conf, deploy this pipe conf on the device, and then program the pipeline using flow rules with their uh, specific match and action. But at the same time, you wanna provide support for existing applications and services in Onos that use full objectives and intents. Uh, and we want to be able to translate those full objectives and intents in representation that's suitable for that P4 program. So in the demo today, uh, I'm using a pipe comp that it's based on a very uh, simple P4 program. Okay, this is available in the Onos tree. It's called default.p4. It's a very simple uh, program that uh, as one table called table zero that uh, offers basic uh, layer two forwarding capabilities, matches on the ingress port, destination address, Ethernet uh, destination and source address, other type, and also provide uh, three actions. So one action to set the egress port, one action to send the packet to the CPU, where the CPU is the controller in this case, on us, and also an action to, uh, to drop the packet. So now let's go with the demo. So I have here, I have here uh, honest running. This is the log. I have a minute machine. Um, with Loon, we also provide inside the honest tree uh, um, uh, a minute custom script to run uh, BMV2 as part of minute. So with this command right now, I'm like executing a minute using the script. This environment variable that points at the location of the script, telling me to run uh, the BMV2 switch with some options. I'm also telling uh, me that the controller, it's uh, this IP address. So this is the IP address of Onos right now. So executed minute, you can see here the uh, BMV2 simple switch target running. Now, uh, the way P4 and time works, discovery is, is, is usually performed, it's actually performed by the controller. So the, the device runs a gRPC server. We need to tell Onos uh, the IP address and port uh, where to reach this uh, server. So as part of the minute script, uh, we generate uh, a net CFG file. There's this one that looks like this. So we have the uh, device ID and we also have the IP address and port of the gRPC server. As part of the, of the net CFG, we can pass uh, the pipe conf ID that we would like to be associated to the device. In this case, we pass the empty, the empty string, meaning that we want Honest to uh, deploy uh, um, deploy uh, what we call a default pipe conf. A default pipe conf is usually a pipe conf that is exposed by a driver, uh, in this case, the BMV2 driver. And we also have information about ports. So now that we have the net CFG, we can send this to Honest. Okay, it's working. We can see how uh, in the log, we're actually connecting the device. We're deploying the so-called BMV2 default pipe conf that is based on the P4 program that I showed before onto the device. And other messages that show that actually Onos is talking uh, to the device. Okay, so uh, now if we go in the Onos CLI, we can see that devices, the device has been uh, correctly discovered. We can also see that uh, we have flows on the device. Oops. Okay, so we have a number of flows that have been added uh, to the device. The interesting thing is that if we have a look at the uh, application running in Onos, we see that uh, besides a number of applications representing the uh, PMV2 slash P4 runtime slash gRPC 
driver protocol subsystem, we have the usual standard application uh, running like uh, reactive forwarding, proxy R, LLDP link provider, host location provider. These applications uh, uh, configure control devices by installing flow objectives. So we, now we're providing means to convert those flow objectives into flow rules for the given P4 program. So um, given that reactive forwarding is uh, is uh, loaded in Onus, we expect that at least we're able to ping to hostess, the two hosts in the network. And it's working. I'm actually pinging OS1 and OS2. We can see the usual, uh, we can see the usual reactive forwarding behavior in which the first packet goes to, to the controller and the subsequent ones are forwarded by the device, meaning that we also support uh, features like uh, packet ins and packet outs. Um, and that's all. Is there any question? Thanks, Carmelo. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Carmelo. Um, I think if there are no other questions, we're done with uh, this. I, uh, do we have more time? I was going to do the live compile demo. Okay. If, you have more, if you have time. I'm not okay. Here. So, if you want to give me a quick present, I'll we'll grab it. I'm not a presenter. Can you grab me a presenter, right? Okay, so what I was going to just briefly demonstrate, um, so as you can see, um, we, uh, Onos now supports not only open rodent model, but also open config models, which are loadable. These are extensions that are shipped with Onos, just like any other extensions or applications, and can be activated. But in addition to this, we also, um, you know, and we can view the registered models um, on a separate screen here. You can see that there's over 154 different uh, modules combined between open config and open rodent. You can you know, click on these and get the, actually the original Yang source file. But uh, the main point of the demonstration is to show that you can um, automatically on the fly compiling models. So here uh, in my uh, uh, file, uh, uh, file browser here, I have some Yang files here on the disk in a folder. And all I need to do to compile these, I just need to simply compress that folder uh, to produce a zip file and then simply just drag and drop it. I managed to actually execute the gesture correctly here. Drag and drop it onto the Onos UI and just wait for a few seconds, compile, and here are the newly compiled and registered end models with the source file. And this does this, you know, this makes it available um, uh, using. Uh, the, using the various internal APIs, and uh, uh, you could actually download the artifact and start writing applications against that API. So that just briefly demonstrates um, how this is done. And notice that also the newly registered dynamically compiled Yang model will also be available as a effectively on the fly generated application right here, it's registered on the fly. And, uh, this is how you can extend on us on the fly very, very easily. Very cool demonstration. Concludes the demonstration. This is in contrast to with, uh, with the competing platform, which sometimes has to actually rebuild the platform in order to ingest new models. The same. Don't we say anything there? All right, that's all I have. Okay, thanks, Thomas. Um, I think that concludes our release planning session. We'll have a session in the afternoon, so uh, I'll see you guys there. Bye.